वेलकम वेलकम इन अनदर वीडियो ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोपी फ्रॉम माइक्रोबायोलॉजी विथ शागनी सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वेरियस काइंड ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक फ्रॉम ए कपल ऑफ द टाइम्स राइट सो वी हैव स्टार्टेड विथ ब्राइट फील्ड माइक्रोस्कोपी सो हेयर वी आर सिंपली यूजिंग ए लाइट सोर्स विच इज ए इल्यूमिनेटेड लाइट सोर्स टू सी द ऑब्जेक्ट राइट सो नाउ there we have faced a problem that is as our biological samples are semi transparent in nature so at that extent of high illuminated light it become very difficult to distinguish between what is the specimen and what is the background okay so under such circumstances for creating the contrast or for creating a situation in which we can easily visualize the specimen we have to stain the specimen okay so now as stains are chemical agent it is obvious that it would cause the death of the cell or death of the biological specimen that means that it is clearly observed that we cannot visualize light microscope or we cannot visualize any kind of live cell in light microscope okay so under such circumstances scientist tried to develop a another kind of microscopy which would help us to visualize live cells okay so here they have used a simple thing that instead of using such kind of highly illuminated light we will only allow to enter only a small amount of light into the specimen okay so in that kind of microscopy they have simply add a another instrument which is called annular ring okay or some also called it as, as annular stop okay so this annular stop have a transparent ring okay along with also some condensed areas under such condition this annular stop will only allow to pass a hollow cone of light through the specimen okay so as a result in that microscopy we are getting a low illuminated final image okay but it help us to detect the biological specimen live okay but here another problem arises that is as here we are using a too small amount of light the artifacts that is the impurities that is present due to some technical error during the specimen preparation cannot be distinguished from the cell okay that means in such a low resolution product or in such a low light image you cannot visualize what is your specimen and what is your artifacts okay so under such circumstances scientists again try to think about this how they can solve the problem associated with that dark field microscopy so under such condition they have decided to create another kind of microscopic technique where they are using the differences in phase to create a detectable and visualizable contrast in between the specimen and the background okay and this microscopy was phase contrast microscopy and in that microscopy remember it very carefully that we are using a face plate this face plate consists of a face ring which are providing a 1 by 4 wavelength advancement to the undeviated light as a result the advanced wavelength now are capable of creating the bright background okay and in the back by background the specimen will appear as a dark right so that is how a detectable contrast was generated in with the help of our face contrast microscopy okay now there is a another problem that we have faced oh sorry for that that this face contrast microscopy now clearly solved every kind of problem that we have faced during dark field microscopy or 
our light field microscopy because here we can visualize live cells no doubt about this and despite in that time our artifacts is also present in the system but now the higher resolution allow us to distinguish between which one is our artifacts and which one is our sample okay now after getting a huge success on the on visualizing cells at cellular level with the help of microscopy scientists now try to think about that that we have to extend our research right so they have decided okay we have visualizes the entire cellular structures or we can now visualize the cellular structure well with the help of the face contrast microscope now our goal should be to visualize what proteins are present on the surface of the cell okay so under such circumstances they try to develop another kind of microscopy called fluorescence microscopy so what is the use of the fluorescence microscopy so fluorescence microscopy is relied on the simple funda that there are various kind of object who can absorb a radiant energy of a particular wavelength and emit light of another wavelength and the wavelength in second case is obviously higher than the wavelength in first case okay so on the basis of that they have constructed the fluorescence microscopy right so why are we are using fluorescence strain so now after getting also a great success in that now scientists thought that we have seem now capable of distinguishing anything right now our goal should be to visualize what is present inside the cell okay because yes light microscopy help you to visualize the outer structure of the dead sample no doubt about this our dark field microscopy help us to visualize the relative outer structure of a live cell okay and face contrast microscopy provide us the detailed of the outer structure also face contrast microscopy also help to help you to detect various inner structure but there is a limitation the limitation is the refractive index should be higher or should uh, the organisms inside the cell should have a good difference in their refractive index so that they can be visualized with the face contrast microscopy because remember we have they are just using the differences in phase and that is completely depending on the refractive index and the cell density right so that means detailed in a structure analysis cannot be done with the help of face contrast microscopy right so under such circumstances scientists decided to construct another microscopic technique that will allow them to achieve a further magnification along with resolution okay so now before going to discuss about the electron microscopy i would like to recommend you to go and watch the first video of microscopy that where i have discussed about what is the resolution and what is the magnification because the concept of resolution and magnification is important to know for you to understand the basic concept of electron microscopy why we are using electron microscopy how electron microscopy create a more magnified and resolved product as compared to the light microscopy okay so i will also try to give the link on the description button so no no do you don't have to bother about this so now let's start our electron microscopy dis discussion so electron microscopy as its name suggests here we are using electron to create the image of the object okay or create the image of the specimen the first thing that should comes in our mind that okay we can accept light 
as a source to create an image okay no problem but how electron so let me told you that the light we are considering as the source that can create a image of the specimen is nothing but a bunch of electromagnetic radiation or more specifically saying they are nothing but a bunch of electron okay so as the branch of the electron capable of creating an image of the specimen so it is obvious that electron also can right so okay so one problem is solved that yes we can use electron to create an image of the specimen now the second important question why electron what is the problem associated with li normal light source that we have to shift for the electron so let me told you in light microscopy in dark microscopy in phase contrast microscopy or in fluorescent light we are using those kind of light that is visible by our naked eyes right that means the wavelength of those light falls in between 400 to 800 i think 400 to 800 nanometer that means they are in visible spectrum okay and that was the problem because if you have basic knowledge of the principle of microscopy and what is resolution power then i think you know that there is a formula that is d is inversely proportional to the sorry not d resolution is inversely proportional to the wavelength okay so the electromagnetic radiation that you are using in previous cases was in between 400 to 700 nanometer right so how it would be if we are using a electromagnetic radiation which will of lower wavelength than the visible spectrum okay so as i have told you that the resolution is inversely proportional to the wavelength and as we are decreasing the wavelength so it will increase the resolution isn't it that is the utility of using electron because remember it very carefully that electron are having much lower wavelength than the visible light okay so it can give you a good resolution the problem is solved right another important thing that we have to also magnify them right so can it magnify or can it provide magnification higher than other light microscopes so let me told you that electron microscopy can provide you a magnification of a object up to 2 million times okay we will going to discuss about its magnification part also so that is the idea about the principle of electron microscopy that means the principle of electron microscopy is exactly same with the other microscopic technique that we have used okay but the small differences is in other cases we are using light or i should say visible electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic radiation having wavelength in visible range and here we are using electrons as a light source okay now so it was developed by ans ruska and max noll in 1933 they are two german engineers who have developed the electron microscopy okay so now another important relationship that i want to mention you that electron's velocity is inversely proportional to the wavelength okay that means for ensuring the shortest as shortest wavelength as we can the we have to choose a illumination such a illumination source in case of electron microscopy that have the ability to produce electron at a higher velocity a velocity which is near about equal to the velocity of the light okay why we are choosing this 
because that electron velocity electrons in such kind of high velocity will have the shortest wavelength okay so whenever you are studying about electron microscopy or the principle of electron microscopy try to remember about the two important uh, important mathematical relation that is the resolution is inversely proportional to the wavelength that is the number one and the second one is your wavelength that is lambda is also inversely proportional to the velocity of the electron okay as a result if you can generate or if you can take a illumination source which will produce a high velocity of electron then it that particular electron will ensure a shortest wavelength of illumination source for the sample okay and which will ultimately create a good resolved image okay and by using appropriate eyepiece and objective although here our eyepiece or objective is not made up of glass that we have seen in another cases here we will use the objective which are nothing but magnetic objective okay should have the ability to magnify okay that is how with the help of electron microscopy we can generate a highly magnified and highly resolved product okay by simply using electron which are having a shorter wavelength than the light source we are using for visualizing okay so this is the ray diagram of a kind of electron microscopy so here this is the illumination source which is nothing but white hot tungsten filament so this tungsten filament will generate electron of a higher velocity okay now the here the condenser lens function is exactly same that we have seen in our other microscopic technique okay that it will condense the electrons and transfer them into the specimen okay that i want to mention you that this condenser lens is not made up of glass it is an electromagnet okay now after passing through the specimen now another important thing the specimen will so as we have seen in another light microscopic technique the space uh, some of the particles within the specimen uh, will either absorb the light source or emit it or scattered it or some of the light source will simply pass through the specimen right so similar will be applicable for in case of electron that means some of the specimen some of the particles of, of the specimen will absorb the electron some of them scattered it and some of just allow the electron to pass through okay so the light or here the electron source coming from the specimen will be targeted towards the image plane with the help of various magnetic objective lens okay again it is not made up of glass okay and as a result it will go on a fluorescent screen okay that is the our image source for electron microscopy or we can also use photographic plate okay so as we cannot visualize electron so after falling the electrons on the fluorescent screen there should be a computer program available that computer program will generate the image of the object for us okay so that is the concept of electron microscopy principle okay so here we are using a white hot tungsten filament that will produce a high velocity electron this high velocity electron will be condensed towards the specimen with the help of a electromagnet condenser okay now from the specimen the electron that are coming will be transferred to the fluorescent screen or photographic plate by a series of magnetic objective lens okay and from that fluorescent screen there will be a computer program this computer program will generate the structure of the specimen for us okay from that we can visualize it so that was the concept of electron microscopy so i will wrap up the the video the, this video with another important thing that what do you think that 
in light microscopy we have to stain right dark microscopy and face contrast microscopy do not need any kind of staining similarly whenever we are using fluorescence microscopy we have to stain them with fluorescent dye right so is electron microscopy need some kind of staining obviously it need it ha have a detailed process for the sample preparation because remember during the preparation of the sample it is important that the sample will be free of water and inside the electron microscope there should be no vacuum okay so the sample preparation is itself a very important part of the electron microscopy that i will going to discuss with you in our upcoming lecture video so before that let's revise one more time <coughs> sorry that electron microscopy we are using because here we are using electron for creating the image right so electron has a shorter wavelength than the visible elect re electromagnetic radiation of visible range and as a result it will create a good resolved and magnified image okay so here we have to use a high velocity electron because velocity is inversely proportional to the wavelength so if we are using high velocity electron then it will ensure a shorter wavelength and shorter wavelength will in turn ensure a good resolution okay that is the idea and the rest of the things are exactly the same with another microscopic techniques that we have discussed right and another important thing that here various kind of lens that we are using for example condenser objective lens are of electromagnet okay not they are made up of glass so that is the concept for electro microscopy principle so i hope this video will be helpful to you to understand the basic concept of electro micro microscopy so we will again come back with another video lecture where we will going to discuss about how the sample will be prepared for electron microscopy so till then bye bye